If you're watching this, you probably already have an idea for some kind of writing piece. Maybe it's a novel, or an essay, a book, or a screenplay. And you might think that the best thing you can do next is just to jump in and just start writing. I am here to tell you that you should not do that. In this video, we're gonna talk about what a premise is and how it will absolutely transform your writing process and help you write a better piece faster. So first, what is a premise? For the purposes of our writing, a premise is a single sentence summary of your central plot or argument of a story, book, or other kind of writing piece. For the screenwriters among us, this is called the log line. The purpose is to take your whole idea and summarize it down to a single sentence. But why does writing a premise matter? How can it actually help you as a writer? There are five reasons that you should start with writing your premise. The first reason is that a premise really simplifies your idea. Most new writers have really complicated, ambitious ideas, but the best books, the best stories, the best screenplays are simple. They might look complicated to the reader, but most of them have really simple, clear foundations. If you have a really complicated, ambitious idea for your writing piece, that's gonna make it actually very challenging to finish. And if you're a new writer, the most important thing that you can do to practice your writing, to become a better writer, is to finish your pieces. That's why when you're starting out with something new, the best thing that you can do is to simplify your idea. And the best way to simplify your idea is to write it as a single sentence premise because it forces you to really focus in on the most important, the most simple parts of your idea. The second reason writing a premise is so important is because it becomes the foundation of your book. When you're writing a book, you have to make a lot of decisions. Should you add a new subplot? Does this piece of research fit into your piece? A premise gives you a foundation upon which you can judge all of those decisions. You can make all of those decisions based on whether it fits your premise. The third reason is that a premise really helps you get unstuck when the writing gets hard. Writing is hard. Writing a book of hundreds of pages is really, really hard. Writing a screenplay is hard. Writing in general is hard. And at some point during the writing process, you're going to get lost. You're going to not be sure what you need to write next. You may not even know what your book is about anymore. And when that happens, what you can do is go back to your premise and you can say, oh yeah, that's what my book is really about. A premise can become the compass to find your way back to the central points and the central ideas of your writing when writing gets hard. Fourth reason that you should write a premise is because a premise helps you get feedback. Maybe you've had an idea for a book before and you've shared it with some people and all of a sudden uh, their eyes just glaze over, right? If that's ever happened to you, it's probably because your idea is way too long. It's way too complicated. The reality is, is that no one wants to hear you talk about your idea for five or 10 minutes. And by the way, this includes agents or editors or publishers when you're sharing your idea with them. Your premise can become an elevator pitch, a really quick way to describe what your book is about without boring your listener. And this allows you to test your book idea. You can share it with a lot of people. You can ask people what they think about your idea and they can give you feedback. And as you get feedback, you can make your idea better. And the fifth and final reason that you should write a premise is because it can actually get you published. A single sentence premise is the most important part of a book proposal. It's the most important part of a query letter. A good premise can literally get you published. Getting practice at writing your idea as a premise is going to help you throughout the writing process. From the beginning when you're just focused on writing all the way to the end when you're focused on publishing. So summarize your idea as a single sentence premise. Let's talk about how to actually do this now, how to actually take your whole idea and summarize it down into a single sentence. And we'll look at three different arenas. We'll look at fiction for 
Novel and screenwriters will look at memoir if you're writing a story about your life. And then we'll also look at nonfiction premises for uh, writing a book or an article or an essay. Let's start with a couple of examples for premises of a story. This is from The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. A young girl is swept away to a magical land by a tornado and must embark on a quest to see the wizard who can help her return home. Here's an example from Hunger Games. A rebellious survivalist voluntarily takes her younger sister's place in the Hunger Games, a televised competition in which teenagers from each of the 12 districts of Pan Am are chosen to fight to the death. And Finding Nemo. After his son is captured in the Great Barrier Reef and taken to Sydney, a timid clownfish sets out on a journey to bring him home. So how do you take a whole story like The Wizard of Oz and turn it into a killer premise. There are four components of every great premise. And the first one is that you need to have a protagonist. And that protagonist needs to be described in two words, an adjective and a noun, okay? So here are some examples. Young girl, rebellious survivalist, like Katniss Everdeen from The Hunger Games, maverick, vampire like Edward Cullen from Twilight, or FedEx executive like in Tom Hanks's character in Castaway. So again, two words, usually an adjective and a noun. What if you have more than one character? Maybe you're telling a love story with two main characters or a massive fantasy epic like The Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin. There's two ways to think about this. If you have more than one protagonist, you might describe them as a couple, like star-crossed lovers in Romeo and Juliet. If you have a whole group of protagonists or central characters, then maybe focus on them as a whole realm, like the kingdom of Westeros, right? One of the things to be careful about is if you have too many main characters that you're describing, it can make the writing much more difficult. George R. R. Martin has been working on Song of Ice and Fire for more than 20 years, and he still isn't finished. The more characters you have, the more problems you have, so be careful. The second step to writing a premise for a story is that you need a goal. You need to identify what the protagonist's goal is, what they want. In our Wizard of Oz example, Dorothy's goal was to return home. She was swept away by a tornado. She wanted to go home. Katniss's goal from Hunger Games is to save her sister. Tom Hanks's goal is to get off the deserted island. So what is your character's goal? If you're not sure what their goal is, check out our guide on writing an inciting incident because the inciting incident will a lot of times inform the goal for the character. Third, you want to identify the situation or the crisis or the antagonist, the core conflict of the story. So for example, a volcano erupts in Los Angeles, or like we had in our example from The Wizard of Oz, she's swept away to a magical land in a tornado and has to go on a quest. Or in Hunger Games, they are entered into a contest in which children must fight to the death. Or in Twilight, a hunter vampire stalks Bella, leading the entire Cullen family to defend her. Remember here, it's okay to have spoilers. This is for you, this is a tool for you, So don't worry about leaving spoilers. The fourth component of a great premise is the special sauce. Think about it. Agents and editors at publishing houses see thousands and thousands of pitches for books every year. And when you ask them why they chose the books or screenplays that they chose to publish or produce, they inevitably say something like, there's just something about the story. There's just something special that set it apart. Your story needs to have some kind of special sauce, something special about it that makes it unique and sets it apart from other stories in the marketplace. No one has any idea what that special thing is. Maybe it's the fact that you have a different way of looking at the world. Maybe there's a unique character's voice or an interesting take on current events or a really distinctive writing style or some other special thing that sets it apart from the pack. I don't know what that is for you. You've got to find it out for yourself. But whatever you do, remember that great premises for stories are simple.
All right, let's talk about how to write a great premise for a memoir, a book about your life. Again, there are four components to writing a great premise for a memoir. And it, the first one is that you need to have a core problem or situation. Good memoirs are about one problem that you faced in your life, one situation, one season, maybe even one day. And the biggest challenge that memoir writers face is how do you take your whole life experience and focus on just one single problem, one single situation. Your memoir is not meant to be about your entire life story. The best memoirs have a narrow scope. They focus on one situation, one problem. Find the problem that you are facing in your life, ideally a problem that many others are experiencing, and focus all of your storytelling efforts on that situation. The second component of a great memoir premise is a character and usually that's going to be you. And just like our novel premise, you want to describe that character in two words, an adjective and a noun. Now, great memoirs are about some kind of life lesson. They share some kind of lesson that you learn from your life experience. And so the third component of a great memoir premise is a lesson learned. Now, some memoirs will be completely focused on this lesson, they can be more like self-help books than narrative-driven stories. Other memoirs are more story-focused, and so they let the lesson kind of expand out of their story, but all memoirs are focused on some kind of life lesson. So share the lesson that you were learning in your life, in your premise. And then the fourth component of a great memoir premise is the special sauce. The reality is, is that anyone can write a memoir. Anyone can tell a story about their lives. But what makes published memoirs, what makes best-selling memoirs, is that they have something different. They have something special, something unique. Again, this is really hard to articulate, and it's going to be different for every book. But usually for memoir, they have one of the following. They're about a celebrity, some kind of famous person. They're about someone with some kind of unique authority, some expert or professional in their field. They're about someone with a really unique experience or a unique perspective. They have a unique voice or a unique style, a unique writing style. Or it's about something totally different. I know this is vague and kind of unhelpful. And the reality is, is that no one can really say why some book ideas stand out and others don't. You need to find the special thing that's happening in your memoir idea and bring it out with a lot of practice and testing. All right, let's talk about premises for nonfiction writers. For a premise for a nonfiction book, you need to have four things. First, a felt problem or situation. Great nonfiction books are about problems. You think they're about solutions, but unless you identify the problems that your readers are experiencing and demonstrate that you understand it, no one's going to trust you with their time and attention. And also this problem has to be felt by the reader. You might think that people have a specific problem, but unless they're feeling that problem, it's not going to be helpful to identify that for the reader. The second component of a nonfiction premise is a person or group. So who discovered the solution to the problem? Was it you? Was it someone else? Identify the problem and then describe in a few words the person or group driving the solution. This might be you, the author. It might be a case study, it might be a profile or whatever subject of the book that you're focusing on. The third component of a nonfiction book premise is a solution or a method that works. So what is your unique method that you're going to demonstrate in this book to solve the problems of your readers. And then finally, you have to have a special sauce. Just like with memoirs and novels, there has to be something special, something unique that's gonna set your writing apart. Usually it's gonna be one of the following four things. Some kind of authority. Are you a leader in your field? Are you a well-regarded expert in some niche? Or do you wanna become one? Or maybe it's a unique experience. Maybe you've experienced something that no one else has, and now you want to share that experience with others. Third, it might be a proven solution. Can you demonstrate real results 
with your solution to people's felt problem. Or fourth, it's a large audience. Do you already have some kind of audience, a huge following, whether it's an email list or social media or some other following? After you write your premise, you need to do something kind of hard, something kind of scary. You need to test it. You need to test to see if it's interesting. So how do you actually test it? And here's what you do. After you write your premise, you need to share it with people. You share it with your family, you share it with friends, you share it with coworkers, you share it with random strangers at your local coffee shop. You say, hey, what do you think about this idea? Would you read this book if it was about this? And if enough people say yes, then you might have something. You might be ready to start writing. And if a lot of people say no, or they're not really sure, then maybe you need to rework your premise. When I ask people to share, I usually hear of one of two different objections. The first is, what if someone steals my premise? What if someone takes my idea and they go write a book with it and they become famous best-selling authors and I'm left out? And here's the thing. This isn't something you should be worried about. And here's why. Because if two people started with the exact same idea, they would have completely different books. Don't worry about people stealing your idea. Worry about your idea not getting the feedback that you need to make it better. And especially, worry about your idea not getting written in the first place. And the second fear I hear from people is, what if people hate my premise? What if they don't like my idea? And if that happens to you, I just want to say, I'm sorry, I've been there. It also might be a good thing. It might be a good thing that you found out now before you started writing rather than after you finished. Writing a book, writing a screenplay, writing a novel can take a really long time. It can take thousands of hours. And wouldn't it be great to know if your idea isn't working before you started writing rather than after? This is the Write Practices YouTube channel. So now I want you to do something kind of fun. I want you to take your idea and actually write a premise using the tips above. Then when you're finished, you can share your premise with our community of writers and get feedback on it using the link in the description. Good luck and happy writing.